Star Citizen backers are keenly awaiting Star Citizen Alpha 4.0 and have been for some time. This adds the new star system Pyro to the mix. And at CitizenCon, we got to take a look at those new planets of Pyro. The technology, tools, and assets have expanded now to a point where Cloud Imperium are able to make significantly better looking planets and moons quicker. And the more assets and biomes they make, the more they have to use for other planets and variants in the future. Pyro is a testament to that. So the presentation was called Planetary Pyro. Take a guided in-engine tour through many of the planets and moons of the upcoming Pyro system with five planets and a moon being shown off here. It was actually pretty cool to see. So um, this is all stuff they've worked on over the last two years and it is work in progress still. So it's not finished, but it is coming relatively soon. There's a lot of um, updates and tweaks and, and improvements to do though. And even after it's released, it will still get some more updates. Pyro 1 was the first planet they showed, so um, this is mostly an engine. Gets hit by solar flares regularly. These are great looking volumetric clouds and there are bright blue crystals around. They're spiky, they're going to be glowing in the future as well apparently, but they're like spiky and tall and different shapes that we haven't had before. There are various new flora here. They've used some that were going to be used for a mission previously that, that this mission was scrapped and now they've gone, well actually we just put them on Pyro 1. On one of the biomes for the planets there's spiky rocks everywhere. Another biome has massive like monoliths with flat tops. It's very alien. It looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's sort of a dusty rocky planet sort of vibe there with Pyro 1. Pyro 2 is much more colourful than Pyro 1. The red, whites and blues are sort of contrasted by the oceans there. The planet will have volumetric clouds in the future. Um, some, some of these planets, um, they're going to have them, but they just haven't finished uh, putting them in yet. One of the biomes in, on that planet is like a mountainous red mesa. Uh, mountains and rocks have been vastly improved and are seeing more improvements in the future. So you're going to start to see more and more of these sort of features take up the horizon, much larger features, uh, features that are, can be much steeper or have a much more awkward sort of shapes. Uh, the draw distance has also been greatly increased, making the horizon just look superb. Another biome they showed off was sort of like a desert, petrified desert biome with clumps of dead looking trees although I'm not sure if they're actually dead it's contrasted by a very bright ocean and then if you sort of like look look around the planet you'll see that um as we said earlier that red like mesa biome uh, it has got a load of ground assets and grass there as well they showed off improved ground assets and ground textures and these are very impressive because they've got like much better terrain displacement. The areas look much better when they blended together. The flora looks like it belongs there now, or at least merges with the areas much better. And they can just have much more on the screen. So that just means that we have a better experience and everything looks a bit more realistic. Pyro 3 was the planet we saw in last year's Citizen Con. There are yellows and greens sort of contrasted with fantastic looking clouds. This area looks like it's got the uh, sort of best cloud implementation so far. Moss covers large portions of the planet. The biome it belongs to is incredibly dense and lush. So this wouldn't have been possible um, about like a, a couple of years ago. So the tech has come a long way that Cloud Imperium have built to allow for things like this. There is a coastal biome with coral, also darker sediment around water. They can blend multiple asset sets and types of assets everywhere now. And it looks much better, but they can just have sort of more on screen and more complex scenes. There's a volcanic biome here that also has vegetation. There's a lot of detail on the new flora. The contrast of this planet's biomes, mountains and horizons is genuinely breathtaking. Pyro 4, um, the clouds aren't complete here, so bear that in mind. It's inspired by the Scottish Highlands. There are tons of ground assets here that shows sort of how far the tech has advanced. There are tons of new plants with sometimes juxtaposed color palettes. There's They've, they've got quite a lot of um, sort of bang to them. Trees have seen improvements too, better textures, more bits to them, more geometry. They can have a lot more uh, sort of branches coming off a tree. The blending tech now allows for biomes to cross much more appropriately, actually blending two different 
types of biome together um, so it looks much more natural to move through. There is a crazy looking red biome with circular, huge circular rocks that sort of ships can fly through and the scale of these is absolutely massive. They had a happy accident as well with volumetric clouds looking like fog with rocks jutting out. It looks sort of quite dangerous but um, very interesting, quite alien. The coast biomes on Pyro 4 look more um, like wet sand with seaweed dotted around. There's a massive crater region, literally a massive crater that you can see from space and again this is one of the new improvements they've got obviously previously you could see stuff from space but now you can see these giant sort of landmarks and uh, very high detail the actual crater itself is quite spooky um, it's got creepy trees and sort of has this again juxtaposed red and black assets on the ground very alien and this area is going to be very dangerous we also saw Pyro 5C, so this is the only moon we saw this time. It has a massive strip of obsidian as a landmark, like a ridiculously huge, many kilometers long uh, streak of obsidian. These massive features blend into nearby biomes, but look very unique. And we're going to see loads of planets in the future with these sort of interesting, unique landmarks, these really weird and strange sort of features. The ground looks, um, again, strange compared to other planets and moons because of the nature of the material that's made of. It's made of obsidian. It's sort of shiny. It looks uh, synthetic. The other biomes on the planets are drier and have more like a light gray matte look to, again, give it a bit of contrast here because you don't want everything to look like obsidian. Um, there's lots of spiky rocks here to give different sort of variants of height. And there are um, sort of some red sand and bits and areas around too. Pyro 6, the last planet we're going to look at. So this planet has a very interesting color palette and um, sort of craters filled with blue water are all over the planet uh, and well in, in big areas so it looks like more like a sea um, in, in a lot of places and there's a lot of bright beiges and coral shapes uh, around where there's actually land there's a more rock and sand sort of hybrid biome which has more sort of like light gray colors and spidery plants it also looks like it's raining ash around here the skybox in pyro is redder than in stanton which really impacts the lighting you can see it more easily in the thin pyro 6 atmosphere boom that's it for your look at the planets of Pyro and sort of like the evolution of planetary tech and where we are with that at the moment. We've got some very exciting sort of planets and biomes coming with Pyro, but expect loads more when we get Nyx and alien planets and, and all that sort of stuff. When I say alien planets, I mean sort of like the alien cities and the, where the Banu live and just the Vandal, just loads of stuff. Anyway, I'm really interested to know what you think. Are you excited for any particular planet in Pyro at the moment? Um, where would you like to live? If you had to live somewhere in the wild west of Pyro, which planet would you choose? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Nordcon 2952, the road to Nord 4.0. What do you want out of NordVPN.com slash board gamer? Nord base building? Nord hunting 2.0? A dynamic Nordonomy? I'm personally looking forward to the latest Nord Cruiser. In the meantime, I'm going to make do with NordVPN protecting my data from insidious space pirates and giving me unrivaled access to all the content that the internet has to offer. Use the links below. Note Nordcon 2952 does not actually exist. Also adding to my shill pile, Toby Eye Tracker 5 gives you precise head tracking and control with your eyes. That's the sound of my eyes controlling the lasers giving you unprecedented immersion in Star Citizen. You can basically aim lasers with your eyes. Pew, pew! Use the links below and code BoardGamer for discount. Every month we have a ship giveaway for Star Citizen. For October, we're giving away a Cutlass Black with pirate skin, lifetime insurance, and Star Citizen game package. All you need to jump into the game. Just comment on any of my videos made during October to be in for a chance of winning that. If you would like to further support the channel, please consider becoming a channel member with the join button below my videos or potentially becoming a Patreon. You'll get access to some exclusive content and it really helps the channel out. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video and have a great October.